<laughs> oh yeah, I'm on to you. You thought you'd get away with it, didn't you? You thought no one would find out. You thought no one would know. But I've been watching you. I've had an eye in the sky, watching down, and I've found out who's been stealing my squash seeds. Oh, g'day, how's it going? You startled me a little bit, creeping up on me in the backyard in the late afternoon. Don't do that ever again. You know what I love about organic gardening? It's not just that the food is so healthy and you're growing it yourself and it's good exercise and it's money saving and there's no pesticides. It's all that, but it's also the problem solving. Sometimes you get these issues and these problems in the garden and you scratch your head for a bit and you wonder, what's happening? Why aren't my seeds germinating? And in this case, where the hell have my seeds gone? But I'm happy to tell you that I've solved the problem. I'm gonna share it with you now. Let's get into it. Remember the Rubik's Cube of the 80s? I used to love trying to solve that. I used to love that puzzle until I did solve it and then it was pretty boring. Or even computer games like, say, Halo 1. I remember playing it with my eldest. He was only about four then. Uh, still a better player than I was, but it was really cool to get through to the end and solving that video game even. We as humans love to solve problems. That's what I love about gardening. It presents plenty of problems that are generally solvable, but you just have to work them out. And it's part of the fun, working out these issues and problems and then finding a solution and then getting on top of it and winning. And if you've ever grown corn, pumpkin or squash before, you've probably experienced the, I wouldn't say heartache because it's not the end of the world, but the annoyance of those plants not coming up or those seeds not germinating. Worse still, have you ever dug them up and found that they were missing, completely gone? What happened? Did they rot in the soil? Quite possible. Those type of seeds do rot quite easily, especially in cooler soil or at a colder time of year. But if you ever try to dig up and find out what's happened and then can't find any corn seed or squash seed or pumpkin seed, or if you've ever seen little holes, this is even a bigger telltale sign, where your seed used to be, it's likely you've been robbed by a field mouse. Or if it wasn't a field mouse, it was some type of rodent. Here in Australia, we've got lots of introduced species of rodents, different types of rats. I couldn't tell you the names of them. I just, they all look the same to me. We also have a lot of small marsupials that look like rats, but aren't. But anyway, you might be able to educate me here of what exact type of rodent this is that I've caught stealing our seed. And if you do know the name of it, whack it down below in the comments section so that we can all know what it is. But for now, I'll just call it a standard mouse or a field mouse. These mice are really fast. That even amused me itself on how fast they are. And the reason why they are so manic is because this garden bed is right out in the open and the mice know it, they're a target. Going robbing seed like this in an open area is particularly dangerous for a small mouse because there are plenty of owls around that will happily be watching eagle-eyed and snap them up. And that's why they act so quick. And that's what was so difficult to catch on camera is because of how fast they actually do work. They get the scent, they find out where it is, they keep hidden, and then they'll make a dash for it, quickly dig up that seed, and they've got a few seconds to work. Then they bugger off as fast as possible. It's the funniest thing ever, and I'm so glad that I caught it on camera and that have been able to show you guys what's been happening. But as cute as these little fellas are, I'm not in the business of making rodents fat. I'm in the business of growing food for us. So I had to solve this problem and I used 
the stealth mode of the mouse to our advantage. I knew that this could be solved by a really simple method of placing a plastic container over the top of the sown seed, a little hole in the top to let it breathe. Essentially, it acted also as a, like a little mini hothouse. Because we are sowing them at a cooler time of year through our winter, it does get a little cold. This little hothouse not only stopped the rat or the mouse or the rodent, whatever it is, from digging up the seed, it also made it a little greenhouse and helped the seedlings grow and probably help the seed germinate as well. You'd think, well, the mice could maybe dig under it. And what I did was I just placed it on and then I backfilled with a bit of dirt. And you can imagine the rodent then running up to that, not being able to get under. And if they got, went to try, I, I could see where he'd been trying to dig around to get under. But if you can imagine, it's like a bank robbery. You've only got a certain amount of time before the cops turn up. And in this case, he'd only have a certain amount of time before he was too much of a target from up there. Because of that, he was never able to hang around long enough and dig under. But I ran the experiment by leaving the other side open and only covering this side. And sure enough, he was able to make good away with plenty of seed and had a great time over the other side and he couldn't get these. But that doesn't matter because we had plenty germinate on this side underneath both these two domes. And all I needed to do was then transplant those over to the other position. In fact, we had so many that I've transplanted them in separate places all around the garden. So it really worked a treat. Thankfully, our furry little friend didn't touch any of the peas, which is unusual. Maybe he was just too focused on these other seeds that must have smelt better to him or must have been better tasting. I don't know, but <laughs> thankfully he left the peas grow and they're coming up nicely. And the other thing is once you do get the seedlings emerging, they're pretty safe where we are located. Rodents don't chew off the seedlings once they get a few inches high. You just really have to make sure that you get them to that point and then you can remove those domes. And by the way, those domes, I've got them from the dollar shop, four for a dollar or something. If you wanna fork out a bit of extra money on those domes that go over plants and protect plants, that's fine. But I just found that a simple plastic container did the job and you don't need it for long. Like I said, just let it germinate. Once they germinate, take it off and you should be pretty safe, especially for these types of plants. The chances are little Stuart, the squash seed stealing rodent, is probably around here somewhere. They don't like to travel too far. And of course, why would you? You might as well make your home where all your food is, little bugger. But at least we've put up a barrier and we've stopped him Kind of anyway, we've limited and controlled what he can and can't steal. I'm sure he'll be back to nibble on a few things and steal the odd seed, who cares? The main thing is we solved the problem. And so if you are having a few issues trying to germinate or grow pumpkin, corn or squash seeds or anything like that, have a bit of a dig around or if you see any diggings, you'll know what it is. And if you don't see anything, dig them up and see if you can dig them up. Have the seeds decayed in the ground? Have they rotted or have they been stolen? And if they have, that little trick can help heaps. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. Little smart Alec. But how cute was he? <laughs> hey, and what, well, I was gonna say, what variety is he? What species is it? Do you guys know? I mean, I'm no expert on rodents, that's for sure.